Hey everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box, and I'm here today with another episode of The Witch Booktube. And today we're going to be talking about another Anusha Leonte book called The Alphabet of Desire. Here it is. And as before, if you have been watching this or if you're new to this particular series of book reviews, these books only come in digital format. I think out of the 20, uh, 19 of them can be purchased through Amazon. The 20th, I have to look, I think I got it through Walmart. When I started this dive into this particular author's books, maybe this is the seventh that I've done so far, maybe the eighth, not only are these books books that speak really deeply to me and my hunger for more knowledge about witchcraft and in particular magic, but I found that even though they're super short, very concise, they're hardly 101s. They're not Witchcraft 101 books. And we've talked about this before. I really am striving to find books that speak to deeper matters when it comes to why magic works. How do we really formulate spells? What else is there to this spiritual path that we call witchcraft? And, and it's important to note that not everyone actually considers this a particularly spiritual path. Sometimes people choose witchcraft simply to attain and manifest, which is just as valid as any other choice. But here at The Witch's Box, I'm a spiritual girl, and this is where we're going. We're going on that journey together because this is what I'm into. I think I said this in the last video, which was, if I'm not mistaken, either Chaos Magic, It's Salient Features, or it was Chaos Magic and Talismans. In one of those two videos, if I'm not mistaken, I think that I identified the fact that my belief is he hasn't, so far to my knowledge or my recollection, identified himself as a Chaos Magician. However, it seems that that's the path that he seems to be speaking about, and sigil magic is a pretty central figure, plays a pretty central part in chaos magic, at least from what I'm gathering from this particular writer. And you all know by now, and if you're new to this, you're going to learn that I am all about the sigil work. I'm all about the sigil work. I'm all about the servitor work. Like those are my predominant methods of magic, with the exception of the occasional bay leaf burning when I'm in the kitchen and I need to send something out into the ethers very quick and fast, right? Like that tends to be how I maneuver in terms of my spell work and my magic. And there are exceptions to that depending on if there's something really deep and transformative that I want to work on, but that's a whole other video for a whole other time. So what I'm finding with these books, even though they cover other things, so for instance, the last two books that I did a review on were on Chaos Magic and what it is, identifying that, kind of giving you a broader definition, maybe even, a, I think it's one of them, I don't remember which one speaks a little bit to the history. The last one, which is Chaos Magic and Talisman, speaks very specifically about how to create talismans and all the correspondences there. This book is called The Alphabet of Desire. There are other books on evoking different deities. The titles speak to different subject matter, but the through line with every single book is how to work with sigils. And maybe you might get like a repetitive one paragraph where he, just in case you haven't read his other work, he'll give you a very fast and furious definition of what sigil work is. But after that, you just keep getting layer after layer after layer after layer on how to work with sigils, which is what super juices me. Like I love going so in depth into this one particular aspect of spellcraft. I think that it's very valuable for all of us. I think that it gives us this one tool and provides us with this very broad range of how to use it, not just to manifest things in the world, but also as a way of internal exploration of learning, of contemplative practices. There are four books where sigil is in the title. One is Sigil Invo Invocation, Sigil Evocations of Alchemical Elements. This is me transitioning into this book. One of those books speaks to using sigils as kind of an entryway or a portal, those are my words, not his, through which to give yourself an experience with a particular element, a particular entity where you, it's kind of like a portal for you to walk through, enter in through, trance into, that allows you to understand viscerally, experientially, the energetics involved with maybe the element of air or fire or the elemental energies around Jupiter. And gives you a portal through which to become intimate with those energetics and understand them and to learn them just for the sake of learning. 
yes, that knowledge and that wisdom has implications for the way you move in the world, for the way you connect to the world, for the way you cast your magic in other areas. But just specifically to show up with this tool that connects you to this energetic is so powerful. I love that. So this particular book, I would say this is definitely intermediate level witchery for sure. Mm, some would say advanced. I think I was reading a review somewhere and someone called this advanced magic. I don't know. Maybe. It just depends on what you're proficient in and what you've been practicing. The Alphabet of Desire is something created by Austin Osmond Spare. And you'll remember that name because he's the one who created a particular way of creating and working with sigils, right? And he's probably the most popularly sourced person or creator of that particular way of creating sigils. And the way that he does it is usually you write your intention. I don't personally do this anymore, but you would get rid of all the vowels, you get rid of all repeating letters, and with the letters that you have left, then you use those letters and those forms to create your sigil, right? That's the spare method of creating sigils. He went further to create something called the Alphabet of Desire, and I believe that Anush and Leonte in this book defines it, talks about how you can use the Alphabet of Desire, and I think he throws a little bit of his own methods in there as well. So what is the alphabet of desire? I find this to be super fascinating and I'm, I've never worked with this. I'm trying to synthesize as I share this with you. So the alphabet of desire is creating a grouping of sigils that symbolize aspects of yourself that you may want to work with. So an example of that would be that part of yourself that is creative. You create a sigil for that. That part of yourself that is brave, you create a sigil for that. That part of yourself that's afraid, you create a sigil for that. You create a long list of different things that you want to create a sigil for and using that symbol, that sigil that represents that specific aspect of yourself, you work with it in such a way where either you can activate that trait in yourself to make it more prominent you can work with that to make it a lesser part of yourself so that, for instance, if you're gripped with anxiety or fear, it can, you can work towards lessening that effect that it might have on you. You can take those letters and those aspects, they're not letters, but sigils, combine them to make other things that you then activate within yourself. It's an external way of programming and working with segments or portions of your psychology. I mean, I'm not even doing this book justice and what I'm telling you. What I do want to complain about, and again, Mr. Leonte, if you're out there, because we don't know where you're at, and we're at this point, I'm convinced this is a pseudonym. I would have loved for this book to have been much more extensive. I feel like this is something that can be explored in much more depth. However, you get what you need here, but I just wanted to read and understand more. This is a really powerful tool that begins to dive into how you work into, with your own personal internal transformation. We're talking about psychological traits, personality traits, and I think that the implications for how you can use the alphabet of desire are probably much more far-reaching than what I'm sharing with you or what is even shared in the book. So this is a definitely a much more intermediate, advanced layer of learning, exploring yourself, and activating parts of yourself, in my mind, to help them show up more to whatever's going on in your life, or show up less, or combining things to shift the way you are and do things in the world. There's a lot to explore here. Again, I'm blown away. Just blown away. I really appreciate these books. For me, this all falls under the category of contemplative witchcraft, where it's not about the spell casting and the getting and I want this and I want to manipulate that. It's really about how do we learn and master ourselves and our internal worlds in a really curious, open-ended way that just really fascinates me. I think that the implications for self-mastery here are profound. So this book, as most of his books have gotten a four on Goodreads because I just am blown away and I'm really appreciative of everything he's sharing. And before I close out, I want to just really look to see if there's a quote, because I highlighted just about most of the book, and so then at that point it becomes kind of pointless to highlight, but I was excited, so what can I say? <laughs> so this is part of his introduction and his definition. That though this, which is the alphabet of desire, is rooted in many of the same ideas as sigil magic, it transcends sigil magic, becoming an actual symbol system of one's own psyche. 
Incidentally and occasionally, the designs made as part of the alphabet of desire can become a sort of abstract pantheon of one's being, if you will, allowing chaos magicians to access different aspects of themselves at will. You guys, this is deep. This is deep. This is amazing. I think that the implications for this are probably farther reaching than I can imagine. And you know me, anything that will create a deeper connection with who you are and self-awareness is something I vote for and wholeheartedly advocate for. This book, get it. If it's too advanced for you, listen, the book will always be there. Although who knows, because who knows what's going to happen with these books. But this was on Amazon. The link is below. $2.99. Digital download. Once you've downloaded it, it's yours forever. It's probably for me personally, because I have worked with sigils. I have not worked with the alphabet of desire. This is something that I'd read a couple times again and take some copious notes around and begin to kind of slowly experiment with. So this is something that you'd experiment with. It is definitely intermediate to advanced, but exciting, super exciting. And again, it takes sigil work much deeper than what we've covered so far. So it just gets better and better. So that's the book. Thank you for hanging out with me. As always, talk to me about what your thoughts were. Have you read it? Have you not? I want to talk about it down below. And at the time of this video going live, our Witches Book subscription has gone live as well. So we have now two subscription services, The Witch's Box and The Witch's Book. So The Witch's Book is where you get two, let's say, intermediate to advanced witchcraft books delivered to your home once a month. And that, that box will be on occasion. I can't promise you every single one because there is a month where the books are from someone who is passed. But for the most part, there will be a surprise from the author in the book. And we will meet once a month like we do with The Witch's Box, but separate where we will have like witch book club style. We're gonna to get together, we're gonna to talk about the books that we've been reading. There is a forum specifically for those of you who are subscribed to the Witch's Books so that we can talk about the books and talk about what we're learning. And in situations like this, with this particular book, like community is really important, right? Because this is new for me, it's probably new for a lot of you. And as we experiment with the things that we're learning in the book, it's nice to have community to say, did you do that? Did you do this? What do you think of if we maybe tried it this way? You can start to communicate with one another what your shared experiences are, and that way we can learn more as a community. Woo! I'm so excited. So the link to that subscription is down below as well. I am so excited about this. I am just as excited, maybe even if not more so excited about this than the Witch's Box, only because you know I'm a book whore, and I'm all about the books, and so now there's just books everywhere. So all of those things will be linked down below. Let me know what you thought. Please join the Witch's Book subscription because it's going to be thrilling. Yeah, until next time. See you later.